Our whole 8.2 section goes and takes our parent and starts adding a constant to it. This is graphing with, and we call this a constant. There's nothing stuck to, no uh, variable stuck to it. It's all hanging out by itself. No variable stuck to it. So we were just in our exploration of 8.2. We kind of get an idea about what that plus C does to the parent function. Today's the 19th, if you didn't put that up there. I like to just keep dates on here so if somebody's absent, I can go back and say, yeah, well, this is what you need from that day. So we're still investigating graphing our parabolas. Now, when you do get your books tomorrow, and this will help you out, uh, when I get you in your seat and say, start looking at some stuff. This starts on page, this definition of a zero of a function starts on page 428. And the whole idea behind this zero thing, this is just another name for x-intercept of a parabola. A zero of a function is another name for x-intercept. Now, it actually could be x-intercepts and I'll tell you what I mean by that in a minute another way to think about it where the parabola touches the x-axis another name for x-intercepts or parabola parabola p-a-r-a-b-o-l-a -A -A, touches the x-axis These are the x values when your y is zero. That's what puts it on the x-axis. These are your x values when your y is zero. the x-axis. Another name for x-intercepts are where the parabola touches the x-axis. The x values when y equals zero. Now, interestingly enough, this could happen in a handful of different, well, three different ways. I'm grabbing my pencil now, and I just want you guys to come over off to the margin here, and can we just sort of sketch it? Oh, that's silly. I just want to, I'm going to kind of sketch in the parent. Like, I'm just going to put an x-y axis and just sort of a general sketch in of the parent where it just touches at zero, zero. This is an example about how a parabola can have exactly one zero, meaning it hits the x-axis just once. And what I need to get you guys thinking about is if I have a parabola, a parabola could also have two zeros. What if the parabola came through its vertex was lower than the x-axis, and then we'd say this one hits twice, it has two zeros, or x-intercepts. Now I want you to think about something. Is there a way a parabola could have no zeros? No x-intercepts? Where might the vertex be if it doesn't ever hit the x-axis? Sure. What if uh, maybe it was like over here? Like LeJabrion said, higher than the x-axis. This one has no zeros. Now, this could also hold true if my parabola was an opening down. So we got to generalize that. You know what I mean? I could have a parabola opening down that had one zero just hits there at the x-axis. I could have a parabola opening down whose vertex was maybe up here and came around and hit twice. I could have a parabola opening down whose vertex is down here and it wouldn't hit the x-axis. So these zeros, we're talking about x-intercepts now. Next we're gonna use blue, red, and green, maybe. Next, we're going to use blue, red, and green, and we're actually going to get our paper here to match what you'll see in your textbook. How could I lose two markers? 
in a matter of no time. Okay, don't know. Blue, red, and green. And it's hard to see, so I will tell you guys what I'm using when. Blue, red, and green. I don't know, I think my, um, I think my projector, it looks a lot better in my video. I think my projector in my classroom makes it so like the colors are weird. I think it's just old. Now, first things first, let's find the parent. What's up, Michaela? Sure. First things first, we're gonna identify where the parent is. Oh, out to the left of this. What page was that other one? Page 428? This is on, this core concept box shows up on page 427 in your book. This core concept box shows up on page 427 in your book. And again, when you put your books in your hand tomorrow, you'll be able to take a look see at that. The first thing that I want us to do, you guys, is go identify, find the parent function. And the parent function, I'm going to use blue. They talk about the parent twice here. And it's the one that's in the middle, hitting the origin with its vertex. So I'm just going in and making that one blue. And then what we've like we've been doing before, what are the comparisons? Based on what's changing, where do these go? Next color I'm gonna pick up is green. Next color I'm gonna pick up is green. I'm gonna go over here in green. When C is bigger than zero, your function ax squared plus c is a vertical translation c units up. I'm using green on there. That's this in the example. That parent moved up, putting that in green. Doesn't look like green in my classroom. Anticipating what's next. When C is less than zero, translation down, we're looking at this one here. Red, sorry, yeah, red. So red is the translation down one. Red is the translation down one. So now we're color coded. That looks like what's in our book. That quiz on Friday, you're gonna use your notes. I expect you to. Woo. That quiz on Friday, you're gonna use your notes. You guys will always use your notes for quizzes. By the time we get to a test, you gotta have this stuff down. And I can supply you with some formulas on your test, but anticipate you can always use your notes on quizzes. You guys are in the process of learning. And so we use our notes for support during the process. I'm gonna come down here in the notes section and I'm just gonna write a general statement about what we've been dealing with here. C is where the vertex sits on the x-axis. The vertex of the parabola sits, I'm sorry, on the y-axis. C is where the vertex of the parabola sits on the y-axis. It's when x is equal to zero. The y-axis is always when x is zero. And then I'm going to just go down here. f of x equals ax squared plus c. And let's just jot in here what we know. We were just talking about how this guy is our y-intercept. And actually, I would love to add in here, what does the A tell us from our first lesson with these? What information does the A, the number stuck to x squared, tell us? What does it do to the parent? Makes it wider or narrower. What else could we say about A? If it's negative, it reflects over the x-axis. So lots of places that we're gonna just keep kind of reviewing what we've gotten so far. Turn 
your page when you're ready to go on. And then in our last few minutes, I still have a few people in class looking at this. Grab your rulers and pencils. In our last few minutes here, we're gonna get set up for these first four graphs. There you go, you guys got it? Read the last part. I'm gonna show you where, now in these problems, and this is where we'll start in class tomorrow, in these problems, we've gotta compare these graphs, all of them to the parent. I'm gonna put a little parent table up here for us. Don't forget that to put a parent on, and you guys can do this uh, before you get into class. We can use this collection of points negative two, four, negative one, one, zero, zero, positive one, one, positive two, four. We'll use at least a few of those points. Actually, let's put negative three and nine on here and positive three and nine on here because in some of these, I think we'd use that. Every one of these graphs are gonna need the parent on it. Let me show you where to put your origins, where to put your X, Y origin. For number one, you want your XY origin down towards the bottom. And then plot your parent. For number two, number two, you want your origin a little more towards the top. And then plot the parent. Three's origin can go in the middle. And four's is just a little above center on that. So I'm gonna leave you guys with the task of creating your XY origins and then putting those parent functions on each one. And there is one that's kind of funny. I'll do number two with you in a second here. Number two was the one that kids were like, it doesn't fit. Now, I put these origins where I did because I kind of anticipate how these are gonna act. Based on what we already know, you guys, like this one right here, I know the parent x squared is gonna be moved down three. So I gave myself more room down here. When I go to the parent on two, this is the one that people were kind of caught up with, I put my zero, zero, and then I actually just plotted these three points. Negative one, one, positive one, one. So there's my parent there. And then I'm just gonna leave you to put the parent function on all the rest of yours and use as many points as you can to get these up there and looking good. And then when we come back tomorrow, we'll deal with the G of X, M of X, N of X, and Q of X.